What's up? Welcome to the No Manga Podcast, a weekly show about all things skateboarding. My name's Rick Beta, and hopefully you're having an amazing last weekend of February. Went by fast, right? It's like, damn, here we are in close to March. You can follow along on social media at Rick Beta, that's R I C K B A T A, or you can also email the show, no manga podcast at gmail.com. But either way, I look forward to hearing from you, your fire hot takes and all. Let's do this. So I guess speaking of fire hot, gifted hater, he's kind of on fire, right? Is he on fire? You know, like the NBA jam. So he's on fire. I kind of think he, I mean, obviously not literally, of course, because that would kind of suck. But the dude has been getting like his footage out there, right? He's been mentioned on the Nine Club, you know, Skate Line, which are, you know, two of the heavy hitters in the games. Many, many other skate podcasts, many other, you know, YouTubers. He's kind of been the hot topic as of late, you know, the buzz, the buzz for the, you know, gifted hater. You know, I talked about both of his videos last week and how he's joined, you know, Tiago in this Q1 Sodi run. Yeah, he's part of that. You know, I mentioned that I couldn't wait to see what was released next, you know, kind of half joking, of course. But guess what? We got more content from the hater himself. That's right. Gifted Hater Street Part slash Director's Cut dropped the very next week so this this week and how often does that happen like never right if you think about it back-to-back weeks of content is basically hard enough to do but a director's cut with additional clips and most important most importantly a new song choice and no it wasn't nickelback or rbl posse i know i know i know but this time it was much much calmer I mean, way calmer. Actually, I can't say much. It was way calmer. My, you know, resting heart rate, it had to have been, I mean, it, it normally is, but it's, it was well below 100 for that one. Well below. Last week, <laughs> I don't know, not so much. I mean, still, it's not RBL, but it works for me. And as I said, I like the, you know, additional footage it had in this one, of course. I mean, did you like it? See, this, this version, I mean, could bring back, kind of similar to, it brings back many memories and debates over the, all of the various, you know, Blade Runner cuts. Remember those? It's like, you know, this one's better. No, this one's better. I think I have, I have it on DVD, I have one on DVD and I have it on HD. Remember the ill-fated HD that, that we ran through our Microsoft Xboxes? You had that little, like, you know, the little HD adapter unit. Yeah, I still have it. I think I still have it on it. I don't have it on Blu-ray. But anyway, but you, you get my point. So it's the director's cut debate now. Which one was your favorite? I'm like, you go, Wesley. You go. Thank you for this. My ears thank you. My heart thanks you. Like, literally, my heart is just, it's, it felt so good to watch this. Did I mention that my ears thank you, too, for this director's cut? I loved the addition of title credits, names on screen. I mean, sure, we all know, like, most of us know who Joa is. But I like your long-term approach to this. Because that's what I always complain about is the lack of skaters getting their names and videos. Even if it's a single part, they deserve the shine. You know, and after all that hard work they put in, it has to be on screen. And sometimes, you know, sometimes they put years into these videos. And not to have their name on the screen? Nah. Can you imagine if movies did that? Like, you know, for example, Blade Runner. None of the names were on there. You had no idea. So, you know, who, who, I think that's Harrison Ford. I, I think. We just have to either, you know, who, know who it is or figure it out on our own. But yeah, same thing for skate videos. And this also helps for the, like in the future too. I'm not just thinking about now. This helps for in the future when some new skaters like coming along, you know, going this rabbit hole in the, the algorithm or whatever we have in the future. And it kind of spits out gifted haters videos. You know, they're going to know what his name is. And that's a win-win. He'll probably still be skating too. You know, thinking 20, 30 years from now, still doing his, you know, hate line. They're going to know his name. So, yeah, I like that you added in his name. He does deserve that. However, there is way more behind his name on the screen this time around. It's very subtle. Did you catch on? I'll give you a chance to pause and, and go check right now. Start it over. Very sneaky. Very, very sneaky. And it's not just that, that guilty smile on Joe's face. Nope, nope, nope. It's a fact that his tail scraped big time on that one. Did they have to swap out a board after that one? Damn. Scrape. 
Does Wax still do those? Remember, uh, I don't even know what he's up to. Does he still do those? Like he calls out skaters for scraping. Does he still do that? Otherwise, if he saw that, he'd probably be throwing stuff against the wall. Scrape, row row. I see you, Joa. I see you. I... But honestly, I wouldn't blow the whistle on that one, though. You know. <laughs> but it is so hilarious. Right when we see, you know, who we're going to be seeing, who we're going to be watching, we're presented with like an epic tail scrape. Epic. And you want to know why it was in there for this cut? It had the better make. Talk about making choices, right? We're talking director's cut, like we're putting on our hat now, director's, you know, director's hat right now. Do I leave in the make with the hang five at the end or the one with the tail scrape? Oh, damn. You imagine Johnny Joe is like, I don't know. Figure it out. Just pick one. You know which one I would want, Wesley? Just, just read my mind. Just read my mind. It's impossible to answer, right? Hang five at the end or the one with the tail scrape. Which one would you choose? It's your part. It's a big decision. But because, you know, the hang 10 landing didn't have a tail scrape, that's what we saw. <laughs> My brain hurts. Which one would you leave in, though? Seriously, I'd, I would rather have the hang 10 landing than, scr- than the scraping of my tail I just just it's easier it's actually easier to fake it like you meant to land like that oh yeah man oh i'm kicking it back to the old school see look at me hanging 10 Woo, yeah should have taken off my shoes my socks just kind of curled over gorilla grip that bad boy then a tail scrape you know a tail scrape you can't fake it unless you do it you know unless you don't slow it down like they did for this one you can maybe get by if they don't if you cr- have like really oh, oh my gosh If you have really loud, distracting music, most people aren't going to notice it. Did you hear me call it out last week? No. Because I was talking about the music. Brain explosion emoji, right? It's seen and it's heard when that happens, right? But however, I I love how that was presented, you know? And as Joe's smile says it all, he knew. He knew what was up. He's all right, these are probably the only two I'm going to get. I mean, unless there's going to be a rough cut. Who knows? But... (laughs) <laughs> and I was laughing, though, because he knew that we knew what was up. But it's Joe, you know, hey, you know, whatever. You know, I'm not going to call him out for that. I didn't call him out for it. I'm just noticing that I noticed it this time around for the director's cut. I'm not hating on it. And why am I laughing? I was laughing at the use of slow-mo that very next line. So at 31 seconds, it started, it was a slow-mo. It was start, you know, the build-up. You know, it's like the anticipation it had me laughing for some reason. I don't know. Gotta watch it. 31 seconds. See what, see what I'm talking about. It's like, oh, slow-mo. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. How about that finger flip? Yeah, baby. Wait. I'm all about finger flips. So refreshing to see, Joe. You know what I mean? Why didn't you want that in the first one, one of the original cut? Is that your decision? Why, why didn't you want that in there? No need to be ashamed, dude. Hell, you could have even, you could have doubled down and did a sow flip the very next trick. A switch sow flip as well. Fakey sow flip. Fakey finger flip. You know, just, fin- just do the next, just like five finger flips in a row. I wouldn't be mad at that. But I was like, damn, all right. First one, you kind of threw it. Ah. Second one, I think you got, I think you got after the, what, the third attempt? Nice flick. That, that finger flip was, it was awesome. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. You know why? Look at the way you spun that board. It's just, whoa, fast. Wicked fast fingers. Quick feet, quick fingers. Yeah, that's what I wrote down in my notes. Dude is a double threat. Watch out, everyone. We got to see some dog footage. You know, the dog wanted to play so badly with him. You see that? He's like, I want to play. He tried to jump up, but he's so small. He just kind of had that little harness on. He wanted to be near greatness, you know? That dog knows what's up. The poor guy just couldn't get up. And is that his dog? Now I think about it. No, he doesn't have a dog, right? Wait, does he? Oh, damn, dude. How do I not know this? I think he's had dogs in his... Ba- I don't know. Anyway, how do I forget that if he does? But anyway, whose dog is that? But either way, Joe was like, okay, let me get the make, dog. Get it. Scram. Had some twirling to do, a little bonking and twirling to do. But anyway, this director's cut was great, so thank you, Wesley. 
And if for some reason you haven't seen the original one, just start and end with this director's cut. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Trust me. But like I said earlier, how often do we get to see the director's cut the very next week? <laughs> like pretty much never, right? I mean, I can't wait to see what's released next week. Rough cut? Prequel? A before gifted was gifted documentary? Let's go. Let's do this. I'm going to grab some popcorn. I'll be ready next week. Let's do that. When you're going to release on a, on a Tuesday? All right. I'll, I'll be waiting. So, But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this uh, director's cut. Did you like it better? I did. I like the, the vibe, the additional footage. As I said, the finger flips, the slow-mo, tail scrapes, name on the you know title credits. It's all there. Well done. Because I can't wait for next week. So next up, I want to talk a little bit, a little Barletta, I guess, you know, for a moment. It's not too long. Well, I guess it actually would be Enjoy and Barletta. But we all know that Louis was, you know, supposedly, because we still haven't heard the full story yet, a Jenkum interview is, you know, forthcoming. So I can't wait to read that. But we still haven't heard from him yet, really. Okay. But the assumption is that most likely he got involved with the whole dwindle debacle that Bill Weiss got, you know, was a victim of, right? That's that's the most obvious because you think about how long was Louie there, how much money was he making, and they weren't looking at his name when they put up that chart. So, okay, let's pull up Enjoy now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who's who's that? Who's making that salary? Let's uh, let's push him out. Let's uh, find a way to get him out of here. Let's piss him off. Let's uh, give him a 60-day heads up, whatever. I mean, that makes the most sense, right? But, I mean, fill me in though, if he's already discussed what had happened, but... I haven't seen or, or read about it yet. So with that being said, his departure pretty much ends that run, or the run, I guess you should say, that the Enjoy brand, that the one that we grew up and all, you know, grew up loving and have come to, you know, expect. That's all coming to an end. It's a new era-ish, right? With hardly any riders left on the team. And, but I, but I kept thinking too, I mean, but honestly, I mean, are we surprised if you really just be honest with yourself? I, I was thinking too, I'm like, I, I didn't get like that upset when I heard Louie, I'm like, damn, that sucks. But then I posted in his comment, I'm like, does that mean Sonic's coming back? You know what I mean? I think he's got something going on too, but, but as I said, who didn't see this coming, right? I think the writing has kind of been on the wall for the last few years. Sometimes change is good. You know, Bill's going to bounce back too. Louis, hell yeah, dude's got a smart, he's got a smart, smart brain on his shoulders. Smart dude, I'm not worried about him at all. Sure, but sure, it does suck to see a brand go out like that, you know? But I feel Louis and and even most of the crew, they are going to end off better off before than before. But I, I said it, I mean, maybe Louis is going to revive Sonic from the dead. I mean, is that is that a good idea? I don't know, in this climate, in this you know, copious amounts of options for skateboarders. It's hard enough buying brands that you like and support, but there's so many of them that you try to support now. It's like, damn, I don't know what to buy. But like I mentioned in episode, let me check my notes here, 191, you know, with these buyouts, these mergers, it's, it's bound to happen. If your company is in the middle of one, and I warned about this in 191 as well, be sure to at least have your resume updated. Private equity firms like this, like the ones that own Dwindle, are only interested in making return on investment. That is the priority number one. They could care less about who or what you are, how long you've been with the company. It's a cold, hard fact. Trust me, I've been part of one, victim of one as well. Had friends that were like walking past me in the hall like, all right, Rick, I'm out of here, dude. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? You've been here 15 years. It just happens, you know? It's unfortunate. It's the climate we live in. It's part of private equity firms. It's what they do. They want to make the best bang for the buck so they can then in turn in, what, two, five, ten years, flip it, sell it, make their money. Yeah, just constant cycle. So that's you know, what's not to say that this happens again with Almost or Tenzer Trucks or Dark Star or... Oh, Leave New Deal alone, you guys. Leave 
New Deal alone. I think I kind of like New Deal being around. All the crew there, all the original crew. I kind of like that. I probably just jinxed it. Damn it! I should probably cut that out. But no, no, I, I, I'll leave it in there. I, I like, I like New Deal. Although, I should probably cop some of their like reissues pretty soon before or if things get ugly. I mean, that's a brand I loved back in the day, and to have it come back and. Even if I don't skate the boards, you know, because a lot of them are bigger boards than I normally ride. I'm like, I should just cop a couple, you know, before any potential drama that's not going to happen. I'm not going to manifest that. No. But all I'm all I'm trying to say is the long, I mean, the short, long story short is I'm trying to say is that prep for the possibility of it happening again. You know, it just it is. It just happens to be that. All of the dwindle brands are on our radar now because it's just, okay, what, what next now? But yeah, with that being said, though, I can't wait for the Jenkum interview. I'm sure I'll talk about it. You know, maybe it'll it'll drop this week and I'll talk about it next week. But in the meantime, I want to make sure that you watch the latest video from Mob, okay? This was awesome. It was basically 21 minutes of us following, you know, Louis around as he told stories and about his skateboarding journey. A lot of it's still, you know, here in San Jose, so he, he got... You know, showed us where his old warehouse ramp was. And it, it was basically, it was so fun that I didn't want it to end. I did not, it was 21 minutes. I didn't want it to end. I mean, he showed us like his shoe prototype that he made and even like in how he created Mob Grip. So cool. We also got to see his first car. I mean, it's a dusty old Fiat now, but, and per his IG page, he said it's up for sale. I was like, no. No, oh, Louie, you got to restore that bad boy. I, mean, I, I, I know you like rolling in like Jeeps and tanks and stuff, but how about we all, how about we create a GoFundMe and get that bad boy up and running again? Does that sound cool? I chip in some money. I chip in some change. Hell yeah. Don't, don't sell it. Talk him like I know him. Like one, I'm one of his homies from way back in the day. I mean, you might regret it, though. This is just, this is just human to human now, you know? You might regret it. I mean, it's so small, right? It's just a small little car. You can pick it up with your hands, like, just move it around. It's so small, at least it doesn't, like, take up too much space in your garage or your slash your warehouse. Let's keep, like, the Fiat dreams alive. Let's keep it going. Let's go to his IG page. Actually, let's advise him. Say, dude, just don't sell it, man. Just rethink your plan. We'll start there. And if he wants to do a GoFundMe, we'll start it. Just start there. Go to his IG page. So don't sell the Fiat. Louie, you deserve it. The world deserves it, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm camp uh, keep the Fiat, if you ask me. I don't know, Louie. Let's, let's get that bad boy running. But yeah, I'll put the link to the uh, Mob First video in the links, I mean, the notes below. But check it out. Like I said, I didn't want it to end. I could listen to Louie talking for days. Get some water real quick. Let's see, what else did I watch this week? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. I mentioned last week, too. Super Rats Lens 3 Part. That dropped. That was epic. Hell, yeah, I loved every second of it. Even with all the front foot impossibles. Yes. I mean, I know I told Templeton that I wanted to see more of those this year, but I didn't know that it would be in Switch form. You see those? He did what? He did a switch front foot impossible, and they think he did a manual, a nose manual to, to I guess it would be, gosh, how would you call that? Nose manual to fakey front foot out? I don't know. You know what I mean? From nose manual fake, he, he basically was his back foot. Crazy. Crazy. Name? Super. Super good. You have a job or anything? No, ma'am. Just a vagrant. Swamp rat, super good. Whip it out. But anyway, real talk though, his part was great. Watch this part, even if you have an illegal trick list. Trust, hand over heart right now. Trust me. I guarantee by the end of it, you will have that list either crumpled up, like in a ball, yelling Kobe as you throw it towards the trash. Or just burning it on social media, like for all to see, and just be. You're like, you know what, Rick? Life's too short. I I finally see the light. Thank you for for helping me get to this point, Rick. I don't have an illegal trick list anymore. I don't know what I was thinking. I know, I know, I know, Rick. I know, I know. It is okay to like this part, you guys. That's real talk. The tricks. 
they were epic. Can you duplicate them? Hell no. Can you put them in the game of skate? Hell no. Can you watch them on like X Games or SLS? No. <laughs> but still, they were epic. Just don't push Mongo. That's that's all I ask. But seriously, like I want someone who has seen this that hates it. Let me know. Let 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 me know why, and not just because they're illegal tricks. Like honestly, I want to. No, dude, this this was lame. This was whack, Rick. It was whack. And I would say, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. I still love you though. Super rat though, <laughs> so fun. I just I didn't write down any of his tricks. So I just loved them all, and I practice honestly. I don't even know how to describe half of them. So. It's like, and he does this, and then this, and then to shove it, and to shove it, and blah, 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 blah. He just kind of hops along, you know? And boneless here, and flip here, front foot impossible here, switch foot and front foot impossible there. Super Rat is so creative. I mean, I'd love to be his shoes for a day. Not in his shoes, you know, like hypothetically. His actual shoes. Like, what a ride. What a fun ride that must be to be his shoes. It's kind of flipping around, bouncing around. Wee! Seriously, though. What else? Oh, another banger from this week. Shopaholics Abandoned Mall. I wrote down pure and dusty fun. I mean, there's a reason why they were all in masks, and it wasn't for, like, fear of COVID. <laughs> that abandoned mall was, like, it's kind of creepy in a sense, but it was kind of cool, you know? That's another one. I just I wish it was a little bit longer, like 10 to 15 minutes longer. I pretty much never say that about videos. Normally, it's the opposite. So go watch that ASAP and also read about it in the latest uh, Thrasher magazine. Yeah. I guess keeping it on the topic of Thrasher, they recently uploaded a part from this new, like, fresh and -and up-and-comer by the name of Leo Romero. Let me tell you about this kid. He rips. Skates so fast, so hard, destroys everything in his path. It's everything you would expect from a rookie in the game. Wait, hold on, what? Hold on, I got text. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. No way. This source I have, it's an unknown number. It's telling me that Leo is not an up-and-comer. He's not a rookie. He's 36 years old and was supposedly born on November 28th, 1986. What? Did Thrasher confirm this before, you know, uploading the video? I'm going to need a I'm going to need to see a birth certificate. No way in hell this dude is 36. No way. It's like, why you always lying? Uh, 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 stu- uh, uh, uh. Of course I know he's 36. Come on. And which is why I clicked on the video so fast when I see it when I saw it drop. Leo is straight up OG status. Yeah. And he just keeps getting better and better as he gets older. It's kind of like, you know, Kevin Long, right? Same way. It's like, dude, age is going up. But, you know, those little charts, the, the, it's the, it's still going that way for trick-wise, too. It's still going up. There's no down. There's no down. No downward trend. I mean, the dude can do more tricks in the time it takes to fill up a tank of gas than the average pro. You see that footage that he opened with, though? Here, here, Here's the deal. I'm talking like sprinkler to front board down that handrail. Picture perfect, right? And then he does sprinkler to front lip down that same rail. Then he completes the trifecta with a sprinkler to backside lip down the handrail. And it didn't end there. Front smith, crooked grind, front nose grind, front feeble. Killing the spot with a back 5-0. Hell yeah, Leo. That's what's up, dude. I mean, that spot's yours. You know how in like Monopoly you buy a, a a house or a land or a street? I'll give you the deed right there. There you go. It's yours. It's yours. I love the water part. It's like, damn, dude, the sprinklers be gone. I don't even know it's the sprinklers. But actually, it's making me it's making you cool off. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'm trying to get me not to skate this spot. And I pretty much, you know, loved every moment of this video as well. Oh, that the crooked grind on that white rail, 319. That was beautiful. I love the angle, the speed, the distance. That one must have felt so good to ride away from. Like he was crying for so long. Like, great angle, great image. 
and the, quote, no prior insurance bump to bar, 434. That was another visually pleasing trick is what I wrote down. I just let, I like the angle and the speed and the distance, too, for that one. Damn, floating. But one of my favorite lines, though, was 450. He did a nolly flip down that nolly flip down the four stair, and he went through like a like colorful stadium seats, and then to nose Manny on that or off that stage. Yeah, that was cool to look at, visually stunning. And I was watching it on my phone too, so I think I need to watch it again on the TV. Just give it its justice, you know. You're like, how dare you watch Leo on your phone? Dude deserves at least 65 inches, man. At least. Oh, and how about that huge nose slide? Is that Promenade? Promenade School? 5.09 is the time. That thing was a beast. How do you get up that high? Especially a nose slide. He had to like, because you look at the way he landed on the nose. He had to, he had to force the, there's the momentum ugh, to get up there. But yeah, this video, I mean, I say it's a perfect motivational tool for any skater in his 30s. If you're doubting your, your talents or you think you can't do it, you can do it. Notice how I said 30s? Anyone in their 40s were like, damn, I remember those days. Yeah. Oh, man, he's lucky. He still got his youth. Yeah. But you, too, if you're in your 30s, you can still skate like Leo. You can. Now go out there. Make some magic happen. Tag me in the, the footage, man. I'll hype it up for you. But all in all, this video is about 12 minutes long, but it's basically, you know, eight minutes with four minutes of, you know, bonus footage. So in case you see it and you're overwhelmed, you're like, oh, it's technically only eight minutes. So you, you definitely watch the end, though. But what, what I like, though, about what I like and respect about Leo is how consistent he is, though, over the years. Right? His, oh, consistent in his speed, namely, because he skates really, really fast all the time. And that's just what he does. You know, I once saw him leaving Lake Cunningham, the, the skate park near nearby me. And just, you know, it was just as I was, I was arriving, he was leaving. But he zipped past me, you know, on his way to the to parking lot, like flying into the parking lot. I mean, much like T-Funk, he's another skater that has other skaters saying, slow down, man, dude. The hell, take it easy. Slow down. You're going too fast. But yeah. Dude's hustled. Dude's booking it on the way to his car. And that asphalt and that near Lake County, I'm, it, it, it's hard to roll on. I carry my board. So that's how gnarly that dude is. But yeah, either way, it's 12 minutes of time well spent. And as of this recording, it has about 123,000 views, which is a lot, right? You think about it? But that number got me thinking, though, because Thrasher currently has 3 million subscribers. Where, where the hell... What are the other 2,877,000? What, what, what are the rest of you doing out there? <laughs> 3 million subscribers, 123K views. Think about that. How can you have that ratio, though? How come, like, how is Ashad's latest Spitfire part not at a million yet? That dropped, what, three, four days ago? That, when I looked up before I jumped on the mic, only has 209,000 views. Like, what are the other subscribers doing? And I, that's like a thing, too. Like, whenever someone finds out, you know, I have a podcast, they're like, oh, the first question they ask is, oh, that's cool. How many subscribers do you have? I'm like, I always answer, like, I have no clue. Because it's basically spread out, spread out everywhere. And it's truly impossible to know exactly how many subscribers you have. But then again, it really doesn't matter, right? I mean, if I were Thrasher, I could say, oh, yeah. I have 3 million subscribers, but the only number that matters is the views. 3 million doesn't mean like jack if no one watches or listens, right? I mean, I know eventually some get to the great videos, higher numbers that we all know and, and expect, like millions. But I just thought, found that very interesting. I don't know why. It's like it triggered me. I'm like, how come this doesn't have more views, you know? Do people just subscribe and forget? Do they just not care? Is that it? You're like, oh, fine, I'll subscribe to your channel. I'm not going to watch it ever. Or maybe just maybe they're no longer using the technology. It does give some light into like people's YouTube habits, right? Or are they okay? You know, maybe they're not with us no anymore. R.I.P. Maybe three million people have since passed. 
or two million eight hundred seventy-seven thousand. I don't know. I mean, I know it's not apples to apples, but of course, you know, as I got thinking more, I was like comparing it to something like the WWE, which they currently have ninety-three million subscribers on their YouTube page, and some of their more recent videos only clocked in. Like I kind of scrolled for the last week or so. 78 to 244,000 views. That's it. They have 93 million subscribers. 78,000 views for some of them. Isn't that nuts? <laughs> it's like, where are all the rest of like the, the, the 92 million out there? Not even that. Where are all the rest of the 92 million 500,000? It just makes you wonder, right? Or it doesn't. You're probably like, well, I don't care, Rick, whatever. But anyway, let me know your thoughts. Check out the videos I mentioned. Lens 3, I can't wait to see what's next from them. And also, let's see what Gifted it gives us next week, right? Can't wait. Appreciate you guys tuning in.